Hello everyone. Last week, the case I originally had for murder case Mondays, I didn't do because um, I wanted to do the auto case because it sort of fitted very well with um, a candle video that she'd done where essentially I picked up straight after where she let off and I covered the forensic aspect of that particular case. Um, I'll leave that one up above for you to have a look at. Um, the original case I had, and now I can't find it, the case I originally had for last week was the case of Martha Moxley. For those of you that aren't aware, uh, Martha Moxley was a teen who died um, in 1975, she was 15, and um, her death was shrouded in a lot of politics and things like that. You'll understand why. Um, right. She was she died in Connecticut near her family home, very near her family home. In Greenwich there's been two T V shows about this. Um one um I think started starred Keith of Sutherland. Yeah, yeah, Patrick Dempsey. Um he's brought um, the case in um the season in Purgatory, which is Winifred Utley, if I remember rightly, um, was um, very similar to the Martha Moxley case um, and has a lot of parallels. And it's actually done by renowned writer um, Dominic Dunn, who did a lot of true crime programmes way back when. And um, the other one, which is A Murder in Greenwich, because it's Greenwich, Connecticut, in which she died, um, stars, stars Colin Maloney from Leonardo Special Victims Unit as a um a former police officer i think that goes and helps identify who the killer is now the reason why i say there's also politics involved in this is because the person who is currently in prison for the murder is connected to the kennedy family and he thought he's actually said to people that he thought because he was a kennedy he'd get away with it well they didn't thankfully so, um, she was born in August, on August the 16th, 1960, in San Francisco. Uh, she died on August the 30th, 1975, um, during Mischief Night, which is the night before Halloween in America. We don't, I think it started to come over here, but we don't have that much. Um, and in Bell, Bell, Bellhave or something like that. I put, I put the spelling down below. Greenwich, I can't even read my own writing. Terrible. Um, and her body was discovered the early hours the following morning. Um, Michael Scarecrow, which is the is the nephew of Ethel Scarecrow Kennedy, which is the widow widow of Senator Robert Bobby Kennedy Sr. Um, um, Michael Scarecrow was convicted in. He was originally convicted in 2002 and then he was reconvicted again not long ago. The night of the death, the, fam the people surrounding the um, Moxa home, including the neighbours, which were the Scarecrows, and several others were doing what's called Mischief Night, which is where you go around TP in people's houses and things like that. And it's done the night before Halloween so that the teenagers can get their jollies and then the kids get their jollies the following day. And um, it was during that night that um, she went to a party hosted by the Scarecrow family at the Scarecrow family home. Um, she was seen um, flirting that evening with Thomas Scarecrow, Michael Thomas Scarecrow, Michael's brother. And then he, she was last seen falling um, falling together behind a fence with Thomas Scarecrow near the pool of the Scarecrow backyard around 9.30. The next day her body was found underneath a tree in the in her family's backyard. Her trousers and underwear were pulled down but she had not been sexually assaulted. Or it's also revealed that and there was pieces of a broken six iron golf club near her body. Uh, I don't have a script I just have notes. <laughs> um, 
autopsy report indicated she had been bludgeoned and stabbed with the club. Like I said, there was no um, evidence of sexual misconduct, shall we say. Uh, initial investigation. Thomas Skirkel was the last person known to have been, been seen with Martha. Um, and then after the murder, and he had a weak, weak alibi. Kenneth Littleton, who started working uh, as a living tutor for the Skirkel house, um, and he was employed only hours before the murder, um, was the um, initially the prime suspect. Um, over the years, both um, Thomas and Michael, um, Michael's alibi significantly changed, and that obviously raised suspicion. Michael claimed that he had been window peeping masturbating in a tree beside the Martha property from 11.30 to 12.30. Two former students in a school treatment for um, troubled use claimed that they had heard Michael confessed to the killing, claimed he was given special privileges, saying that, that he bragged that he would get away with it because he's a Kennedy, which he is a Kennedy by association. His mother, his auntie, is a Kennedy, and she married into the Kennedy family. He wasn't a Kennedy per se, but he was associated with the Kennedys because of his his um, dad and his aunt being siblings, and his aunt being married to a Kennedy. Uh, the investigation was reopened after a private detective agency hired by Richton Scarecrow in 1991 conducted its own investigation of the killing. The report was leaked telling the media to the media revealed that both Tom, Tom, Thomas and Michael had altered their stories and that their activities on the night uh, about their activities on the night that she died. Um, on June 1998 a really, a really invoked one man evident, um, grand jury was convened to review the evidence to charge Michael for the murder on January the 9th 2000 an arrest warrant was issued for the unknown juvenile for Michael Monster murder. Michael Skirkle then surrendered to the authorities later that same day. He was released shortly after on a $150,000 bail which, I had that money, which means he would have had to pay $50,000 to pay 10% so. On March 4th Skirkle was arraigned for murder uh, in juvenile court because the murder, murder happened while he was a juvenile. Um, on January 31st, a judge ruled that um, Skakel is to be tried as an adult. Um, I don't know how old he was when Mark died. I think he must have been a very similar age to her, maybe a bit older, I'm not sure. Trial began on May the 7th, 2002. On June the 7th, 2002, Skakel was found guilty of murdering Martha and was sentenced to sent and was sentenced to twenty years to life. Uh, he appealed on June twenty first, um, two thousand sixteen. The Connecticut Supreme Court rejected his claim, um, and his case was should be heard that his case should have been heard in juvenile court and affirmed his conviction within. With a new lawyer, on July the 12th, 2006, he filed a petition uh, for writ of, I cannot pronounce this word, so I will pop it in the knee, which is um, meant for fair use, by which the appellate court decides to review a case and uh, at its discretion. Um, in this case, it ordered the lower court to deliver its record on the case so that the higher court may, may review it. Uh, in November 13, 2006, the Supreme Court declined to hear the case. Skirkel private investigators spoke to um, Giltano Tony Bryant, cousin of Kobe Bryant, and questioned Questioned him on videotape on August 2003 
that one of his companions on the night Martha Moxon was killed said that he wanted to rape her. He didn't come forward as he as he and his mother were worried that because he was African American he would then be framed for the murder. Um, the two week hearing in April of 2007 allowed the presentation of his evidence among other matters and in September 2007 Skakel's lawyer requested a new trial due to Bryant's statement. The prosecutors formally responded that Bryant may have been may have made up the story to sell play about case. Um, I don't know much about the Bryant family. October 2007, 25th of October 2007, a Superior Court judge denied the request for a new trial. Bryant's testimony was not deemed credible. No prosecutor prosecutorial misconduct in the original trial. The decision was appealed on March the 26th, 2009. A five-judge panel of the State Supreme Court heard the arguments on the appeal and on April the 12th, 2010, the panel ruled four to one against Gekul's appeal. <clears throat> on October 2013, Gekul was granted a new trial uh, by the Connecticut Court Judge who ruled that Skakel's original lawyer failed to represent him adequately. The prosecutor appealed to the ruling. Oh, unfortunately, it didn't work. The victim's brother was shot by the new trial and hoped that the prosecution would win the appeal. On June 21st, 2002, Skakel was released on a $1.2 million bond. He was um, monitored by GPS. He was forbidden to contact the Moxley family at all. December 2006, the Connecticut Supreme Court reinstated Skakel's murder conviction with a 4-3 majority. The Kennedy, believed that he, the Kennedy family believed that he was convicted for the murder and his cousin, Bobby Kennedy Jr., um, son of Bobby Kennedy who was assassinated not long after his brother, um, who wrote who wrote a book about the case um stated that because of the Skakel's connection to the Kennedys he was targeted. Um there is no evidence in the way um but I sincerely doubt that considering that the to a vast majority of people in the public eye the Kennedy family are seen as the first family of America so and the royal family of America. Um there was, like I said, there's the two programs that it was based on. Um, obviously, with the case being back in the 70s, it didn't have the level of forensics we have nowadays. It didn't have DNA, it didn't have all that, because DNA wasn't found and identified properly until 1989. So, there are, if I looked at this case, the actual case files, I would probably have a more accurate look at this. Um, but from everything that I've seen with relation to the case, the Skakels straight out the bat were instant sus su suspects because of their actions and their activities. Um, for them to say, I killed her and I'm going to get away with it because I'm a Kennedy, that's just going to put everybody back up. Um, that's one thing that a lot of people don't like is when you brag. Um, it pieces people off straight away. Um, straight out of that. It's one thing you don't do. Um, could they have got away with it? Yes. Um, but unfortunately the police didn't stop looking at the case. Private investigators and journalists over the years had pushed as had the Moxley family. Um, do I believe that the person who did it is in jail? Yes. Um, if, if on the extreme circumstance that he didn't, that he didn't do it, then he would be able to say to the the lawyers and everybody exactly what his alibi was because he denied the day after when the body's found he would have thought right what was I doing last night I was doing that um, and obviously because they had a house party 
there's a lot of people saying, yeah, but I would have seen this, I would have seen that. Not necessarily. Um, there have been many times um, in college rape cases and other murder cases where the murder case, murders have happened in the same house as somebody else who's been awake and watching telly and things. And they haven't known. Um, and is it possible that um, something romantic was happening and everything went wrong? Possibly. Um, do we know why? No. Uh, without him actually sell, telling everything he knows, we won't know why. Um, and with them trying to put put some of the blame on the Bryan family, I think that's a low blow. Um, Especially considering all the racial tension that's been, there is, there has been in the US over the years, that it is worrying that you automatically think, oh, um, this person knows information, which is then deemed not credible, and then you're thinking, well, why is it not credible? And the answer is because it is not credible. There is no evidence to back any of it up. Um, there's a lot of issues, there's a lot of questions on this case that likely are never going to be answered, which is unfortunate to say the least. Um, but what else can you say? Um, do I like um, the Scarecrow family? No. Do I like the Kennedys? Vast majority of them, yes. Um, there are a few bad eggs. Um, but you get that in all the families. I don't know how I'm going to do next week. I don't know. I might do another um, high, high media case. Um, I have a look at another high media case. I might look at another serial killer. If there's a case you want me to look at, let me know down below. And I will certainly do that for you. Um, but yeah, this case is definitely an odd one because there is so much relation, relating to politics in this case that it does give you a chill down the spine, especially with it being, being the Kennedys. So you, you always have that initial reaction of, oh, they can't, they can't have done this. So we shall wait and see. Um, so have fun, stay safe, be good, and I'll see you tomorrow.